goes around the corner. Walking on the fight inside of me. Well, that don't look like it. It don't. It don't go down. Robert, it goes down. No, it don't. It do go down. Oh! Stop! Stop! I love those guys in the boat. If, like them, you're a little worried, a little bit anxious, feel a bit powerless, afraid of things going on in the world in the future, you might need some life advice. This book, The Tao Te Ching, is the world's best life advice and I thought on today's self-care practice video we'd go on a walk along the Merry Creek, do a little qigong and learn about the wisdom of the Tao Te Ching. There's a little line in it that says we should all practice not doing. So let's investigate what exactly that means. In our Qigong practice, we learn to move with Wu Wei, effortless flow or effortless action. This is where our movements happen without any conscious thought, where we're completely in the flow, in the zone. Let's go to an ancient story about a pig and a lion. Let's just participate in life as it happens. You don't have to be in control to have a good life. Some days you'll be like a lion. You'll be fearless, confident, stalking with arrogance. No thoughts of hope or fear. And some days you'll be like a pig. A pig isn't concerned with being in the right situation. Be what you are without thoughts of what if I had this? What if I was in that place? When nothing is done, nothing is left undone. So we start our walk. Not doing is to follow the natural world, and the natural world also does not do. It doesn't exert effort. The rhythms of day and night, winter and summer, simply follow each other without cause and effect. So the natural world has no regrets for the past, no anxiety for the future. Minimal effort is the natural way. And grass does not strive to grow after all, it just grows. Grass seeds know what they were meant for and don't want to be anything else. So why are we so exhausted all the time? because we're always on, always doing, responding, reacting, driving, pushing. Today we have a chronic doing problem. We're addicted to activity and always reachable. But what answers do we find in our phones? The news that we need to know always comes to us. And if something's happened that we need to know, well, it's already happened. We can't affect it. We can't suppress these distractions and diversions. Unless we change our habits, they simply come back to us. So how do we lose our feeling of distraction and restlessness? All things in life have yin and yang elements. Life is the cyclic movement between these two forces, the dance of opposing yet complementary energies. And the Tao is the way that yin and yang communicate and influence each other. The energies are codependent one can't exist without the other. And all things are defined by what they are relevant to something else. Each thing is what it is because of what it is not. Wealth creates poverty, hot makes cold, sound comes from silence. All life depends on the harmonious balance of this yin and yang. Both are both and neither is either. Think of right and wrong. Right agrees with right opinion, but only until it meets wrong. But wrong believes it's also right. So both are both, and neither is either. All things simply enjoy themselves. In one of my favorite quotes from the Tao, it says, What is a good person but a bad person's teacher? And what is a bad person but a good person's job? What happens when we become imbalanced? We become stressed. 
illness, disease follow. We believe that yin and yang forces are in opposition. We look for a cause-effect relationship, a fight. And what happens when we fight, when we push, we interfere. When we get confused, we start to ponder a little something like this. Is the universe playing me or am I playing the universe? Like the chicken and egg, where the future and past form a perfect circle, we get stuck trying to discover where that circle starts and which came first. And there it is. That's how all eggs are laid. So what's wrong with doing? When you try and force any action or change, you also meet resistance. And when we think about our needs, they often become insatiable. One need simply leads us to another. When we are doing, we're often already thinking about the next doing thing, wondering what might be better, what could be more satisfying, what else could I have? Not doing is alertness without tension, relaxation without dullness, until we are not sure if we are making something happen or letting something happen. As we practice, our mind slowly becomes clearer. We may start to see the implications of action, remembering that our actions may create suffering for others. And so we start to practice. It gives us direction. Detachment from our distractions comes from awareness and self-understanding. We change our habits. We pay attention, gain awareness, move away from separateness, ignorance. We form intentions. We ask, how many moments of not doing are there in my day? How many moments of just being, experiencing joy and clarity? We ask how many moments of feeling gratitude for all that we have. With gratitude, we focus on the here and the now and we move away from grievance, a focus on what is not here, or blaming others. We move from practice to awareness, to intention, and back to practice, an endless cycle of not doing. We inhale to take the arms up, hold the breath, turn the palm, exhale, draw fingers together. Inhale, draw new energy in. Exhale, release anything that does not serve you. Inhaling to raise the arms up. Hold the breath, turn the palms. Exhale, draw the fingers together. Inhale, new energy coming into the body. Exhale to release. come back to the side. Another important element of not doing is action without expectation. Not doing is to focus on action without expectation of a particular result. Before any action, we ask two questions. Is the action necessary? Muddy water is sometimes cleared by leaving it alone. And the second question, is the time right? Are the flow of actions around me favorable to an outcome? Not doing is to only do the most appropriate action in the most efficient way. And the best action may be sometimes to let things be. And so we let things flow. Not doing is an apathy, passivity, indifference. It may be the highest form of action. It is acting in the way nature does. It's actually easy to practice doing nothing. What's hard is to do something without harming anyone. So we just let everything be what it is, it will be anyway. Instead of trying to find answers, we look for complementary pairs, each essential to the other. We flow between body and mind, thinking and feeling, logic, intuition, being a teacher or a student, planning, spontaneity, obstacle, becoming opportunity, pleasure and pain.
So we stop rowing the boat against the current. We let things go their own way. We stop interfering, striving, pressuring, fixing, controlling, reacting. We now wait for our opponent's weakness to show. We use stillness as a preparation for action. We live in a world that's not hostile or alien. We remember that we come out of the world, not into it, when we are born. So we become present, playful, aware, effortless, efficient, enjoying life. We become inclusive and connective to others. We live by example. And so we come back to the pig and the lion, just participating in life as it happens, not having to be in control to have a good life. Some days will be like a lion, absolute confidence and fearlessness. And some days will be like a pig. No thoughts of what if I had this, what if I was there. We remember that when nothing is done, nothing is left undone. Hope to have inspired you to read the Tao Te Ching. Please um, share and enjoy this video and hope to see you again in another self-care practice.